um, you'll get A4 sheets. Um, grab yourself a couple of pluro textures, a couple of pens, uh, clipboard, cheap setup, and just uh, work your way through. Just cross them out as you go along. Um, it's easy when you've got short distances because as a navigator, you're doing a fair bit pretty quickly. But you might get to a small section and it's 97 kilometres before the next turn. Okay, so then there's sort of the time for the navigator to have a sleep, really. So I guess, yeah, just be mindful of things like that. Um, please help your drivers as well. When you're coming up to a TNS section, as an example, help them with a countdown. 500 metres to go or something like that, 200 metres to go. Just be mindful, okay, because once again, driving on dirt, and I guess firstly, who's probably driven more than 100 k's on dirt? Yep, yep, that's all right. So basically, being mindful, and that's where really your day one use as a, a, a tester and a feel, okay? Um, driving on dirt is no different than driving on other things. You've just got to respect what it can do. It's as simple as that. Not to fear it, but you've got to be mindful, okay? So the vehicle I'm in, it's a bit over three tonne. It takes a long, long time for me to slow on it. Um, so I'm braking a lot earlier than potentially some of the vehicles that you may be in. So it's just being mindful of what they can do. Um, but ease into it and you'll get a feel for what it is that way. Um, what we'll also do is have some signs out at the time. On the road, we'll have a setup crew go out in advance. So not everything when we've done the survey for these route notes, obviously things can change. New potholes, washouts, anything can happen like that. Road works, okay guys? Um, when I did the last survey, there was over 30 graders on the road in various sections um, doing a lot of, lot of road work. So I can almost say there's fair chunks that'll probably be tar that in the route notes I've probably got cautions, washouts and things like that. They could be complete brand new sections of dirt, uh, sorry, tar by the time we get there. So, but our setup crew, which go out in advance every morning, they'll go out and put up physical signs for us if there's cautions along the way. So if there is a, a major washout, we use a C, a double C and a triple C, caution signs. Now C is just being mindful of what's happening, okay? Just be prepared to slow down. There's a um, something to be mindful of. Double C, it doesn't mean maybe a stop, but you're slowing down because you may need to veer off or veer around, something like that. A triple C is almost a stop, there's a reason why. Now it could be almost a one foot drop in, but you've got no choice. You know, you can't go around it or we can't mark a, a different path or something like that. So if you see these signs, um, both of you in the car or whoever's in the car, call it out very quickly. I can see a double C coming up or a triple C and stuff like that. Once again, probably hit through the radio too. You'll, there's a lot of communication through the radio guys. It's as simple as that. Um, so just be mindful of those. The physical signs take precedence over this here. So if for any reason, in my wisdom, I said turn left, but there's no turn left. You can only turn right and made, I made a mistake. Okay, they'll put a turn right sign there, okay? So follow that sign. Now, we all go through the same boat because then you say, well, won't it change the distance? Yes, it will, but it'll change the distance for all of us. So yeah, so just be mindful of those things. If you go, well, it says in here, but the, if there's a physical sign, follow the sign, okay? But also, it'll be through the radio comms. It's not that you guys, will, any of us will get to it first straight away and not know what to do, okay? Um, <clears throat> If you've got any questions on those, please see me. Um, any thoughts and bits and pieces, but just, yeah, just listen into those ones that way. Um, the conditions of what we're, we're about to experience and going through, look, there's a lot of unseasonal weather um, all across Australia. It's not just in Queensland. Um, WA's been copying it too. Central Australia's, um, uh, I guess for the last two years now, it's been quite wet through this time when traditionally it's not. Um, what does that mean for us? Look, realistically, on a lot of these roads, They'll shut them pretty quickly um, and then they'll get the graders out very quickly again because it's their tourist season. So it could be something there that even if the roads are shut for wet weather, they've reopened them up. Most of the time they'll be graded relatively quickly straight after. Um, look guys, dust, it just, it's, you're gonna get it every day. It's as simple as that. Um, if you're gonna overtake, that's okay. There's, there's not a problem with overtaking here and I'll, t I'll tell you the method of doing that shortly, but don't sit in someone's dust for the sake of it. Don't just sit there back yourself off if you want. There's no point being out there not seeing, you know. If you're going to over, overtake, then that's okay. You are going to have to creep up and wait for it till you're called through. But there's no point sitting there because your car's not going to like it. You're not going to see it. Um, look, a lot of the uh, desert runs and that, they're green at the moment. It's phenomenal how much greenery there is out there. Um, all the channel country at the moment, you'll see the difference of the channel. So the channels that actually cop the rain from the headlands, it's a jungle. 
then you go over a sand dune to the next one and it's a desert. You know, the difference between just going over one rise, but it's where whichever channel gets the, the flow of the water. So take your time, have a look. Um, some of these places you guys may not have been before in the scheme of things, so enjoy it, you know. Um, washouts, as I mentioned there, look for the first few days of a PM run, we're driving west, okay? So you've just got to be mindful, dust, and the sun coming in, it's gonna be quite hard to see. So please be patient, take your time, keep it easier that way. Um, animal strikes, look, there is at the moment, um, probably on my last survey, there's probably more emus I saw than ever um, at the moment. Uh, there's quite a long, lot of chicks um, from breeding season, stuff like that, though most of those guys are probably gonna be knee high at least by now at this stage. So expect that there's gonna be wildlife. Okay, kangaroos, yes, um, generally at, now the rule of kangaroo is pretty much is if it's on the right hand side, by the time you get to it, it wants to get to the left hand side. It's just whatever the opposite side is, it's the nature. So just be mindful that they're always going to try and cut across you as we go along. Um, plenty of eagles, plenty of hawks, uh, those sort of things like that. Um, Wedgetail eagles, uh, there's over 32 pairs of eagles I saw in the last survey um, for that, which is good. Um, be mindful these things take a long time to take off, okay? They are large or can be large birds. They're normally picking on a carcass or something on a road, okay? And they're the last to leave it, okay? You'll have crows, you'll have eagles, all those sort of things, oh, sorry, hawks. They know they're a lot quicker, they'll be gone. The wedgies generally the last to there. So just be very mindful. Don't think that you're gonna, well, I'm gonna slow down from 80 to 60. It could still be sitting there or some of them will just hold their ground. They do, they'll wait. They'll force you to go around them. Okay, so please just be mindful for those things. Uh, camels, um, so I spotted camels while I was on the road. Last time I went through there, there's two freshwater crocs I found on the roadside um, as we're driving through some of these territories. So that's it's just the nature of what there can be, okay? Um, so day one, ease into it, as I say, please be mindful of that and listen to the radio calls, work your way through, get that comfortability. Um, and then you've still got, as I said, another you know, 5,400 Ks to do, you know, so plenty of time for those ones there. Please be respectful around towns. Um, last thing we need is someone doing 70 in a 50 K zone in a town that's got probably four homes, okay? Just please be mindful, you know, those sort of things like that because they're the phone calls that I guess I get um, from the local highway patrol, okay? So please be mindful understanding here that these guys can shut us down anytime, anywhere on that front and it's not shutting down one car, it shuts down the event, okay? And then we're asked to remove all the stickers off the cars and send everyone home. Nobody wins on stuff like that. So please be re really respectful of those things. Um, if you wanna stop and have a look at something, please do. It's encouraged, there's nothing wrong with that, okay? If you're stopping and a car's coming up, which we're a convoy, let's be honest, there's always gonna be cars in front and behind, give them a thumbs up if it's all okay, okay? If something's not okay, give them a thumbs down. And the reason why we do this is because you may not be in the car. You might, you might be either outside taking a photo, you might be stretching your legs, might be having a drinks break, whatever it might be, you're not gonna be at the radio. A car coming up, there's no point me radioing, out, radioing through because you're all standing out. Just a thumbs up or a thumbs down, okay? Um, especially all the OVs, we will definitely be stopping, okay? Bash cars will slow down and sort of visualize and have a look, but realistically, if we see a car and we can't get you, we'll just pull over, hopefully everything's all right and keep going, if not, We'll work out what we do from there. So just give us those ones there. Um, if for any reason you're gonna leave the bash route. So on some of these sections there, you might go, look, I'm gonna do the tar for the afternoon. Okay, so come and talk to us at lunchtime. Say, yeah, I've done enough dirt for today or I'm getting tired or those things. And it's gonna happen, it generally is gonna to happen to everyone. It doesn't matter if you're a long distance driver or not. You're gonna get days where you're tired. Um, are there gonna be uh, quicker sections on tar on parts of it? Absolutely. Okay, there's not a problem doing that, but we need to know. So it's sort of one of those ones we'll get through to lunchtime, come and see us and find us, hey, look, then we at least we'll write it down and then we know where you'll be. You still got to check in once you get to the other end though. We still need to know that you've made it. Um, otherwise, we'll be then coming back along the tar to find you and stuff like that. So please, that's, that's okay. It's not a problem doing that. Um, just be mindful that was what we need to do. Um, at times you may need to do a recovery or be asked to do a recovery. What's a typical recovery on this here? Somebody's probably slid off an embankment, but hasn't got enough traction to actually come back up and onto it again, okay? So I guess it's okay if you haven't done a recovery before because there's plenty of people there to help and it's okay if you don't know, all right? That's the first thing. 
If anyone has got a tow ball, one of the 50 mil ball on the back of their cars, I don't ever, ever want to see a snatch strap on a tow ball, okay? The, the youngest child we've had here in Australia is eight years of age who was killed by the shock mount of that ball going through the front windscreen of the car that was being recovered. Okay, it does happen. Um, it's just, yeah, and that was in, yeah, Western Australia not very long ago in the big scheme of things. So please don't ever do that, all right? Just take the receiver hitch out. You still got the pin going through, use the pin. Okay, it's rated, it's designed to do that. So if you're not comfortable, learn. Okay, there'd be plenty of people there to do that, but no cowboys. Okay, it's just not worth the risk, okay? Um, cabin fever, as I said earlier, it does exist. Doesn't matter who you're with, your best mate of 20 years, it, it, it still exists, you know, on these sort of things. You'll solve the world's problems in the first 48 hours, all right? You'll just can't stop talking, okay? And then you're gonna get the dust will come in and start, even though I'm drying up now, you get the dust starting to come in and that'll dry you up pretty quickly. But then your conversations will start to get a bit shorter and a bit shorter, a bit shorter. Okay, and instead of them, you know, last town they didn't get you a cap, they got you a flat white. You know, it's like, Jesus, what? You know, so just be mindful that these things do happen. If we need to swap people out of a car, it's okay. Okay, because what we don't want to be seeing is somebody on the roadside with their bags. <laughs> now, that does happen. Okay, that's not a scare tactic. That physically does happen. All right, so... Look, even last year there was a team, I guess, it got through to me as a few grumblings and those sort of things. And I guess when it gets to me, at the end of the day, um, I'm the adjudicator to, to come up with it and sort of break the group up a little bit. Um, if you're not comfortable with the way somebody's driving, tell them. Okay, you have to tell them. Do not sit there in the front, the back or whatever it is if you're not comfortable. Okay, because you're not going to enjoy it. All right, so nobody wins on that. Um, so please, yeah, if we need to swap someone out in a car, it's Okay. Jump in an OV car. I've got David um, who'll be with me. David, go with them. Go and help nav or drive or whatever we need to do. Stuff. It's okay. It's not a problem, okay? So if you have a problem on the road, share it, okay? We're all here to help with those things. Um, so, yeah, slow down if you need to. Talk, talk to the guys there. Just make sure you're comfortable with those sort of things. Um, you need to trust each other too, okay? The navigators, okay, you need to trust what your driver's going through in that feeling and, and vice versa. Drivers, you need to trust your navigator. Okay, you may have driven the road two years ago, one year ago, may have done a caravanning holiday, trust your navigator, all right? If you need to stop, pull over. You need to ask, there's always cars in radio range, okay? So we can easily sort that out. Um, we're on channel 20 UHF, so each morning at, uh, as we check out, we're going to do a radio check, okay, just to make sure that it's working, because at times wiring, can easy, you could have it working on day one, day two, it's not working. Okay, so we'll do a radio check on Channel 20 as we go through. Um, look, probably besides a guy you'll meet, Les. Les will always tell a joke, I guess, on the radio and those sort of things like that. But at the end of the day, it's in the busy periods, it's quite busy on there. You need to be listening in on what's coming up. It could be a farmer on a quad bike with his dog crossing the road. It could be a tractor or a slasher doing those sort of things like that. It could be some road work and graders. Um, it can get very busy very quickly. Now, if you pass that, once again, at your distance, doesn't matter. But if you're coming up to those things, you're just being mindful and stuff like that. So please be focused on the radio. Don't drown it out with other things or if you've got music playing or anything like that, whatever, that's fine. But just please be very mindful what's happening on the radio. Um, when do we use the radio? How do we use it? Okay, once again, on TAR, we don't really use all the signs or those things like that because you visibly can do that. When you enter dirt or, or gravel, I should always call it gravel, when you enter gravel, you'll advise you go on gravel. So OV1, so OV1 on dirt, okay? Or gravel, whatever you want to call it. So then the car directly behind me, even though it might be a little distance, they may not know who it is. They know it's OV1 in front of them, okay? Simple as that. So then if, um, if there's a question, you know who you got in front of you or who you got behind you as well. So you can sort of help, you know, connect in a bit tighter. You'll know, okay, I've got TMH2 or whatever it is behind those sort of things like that. So just be mindful of the cars around you. When you go to overtake, it's okay to overtake. It's as simple as that, guys, but you just gotta be mindful of what you're doing. <coughs> Unlike tar, when you're overtaking, accelerating, you're flicking a lot of rocks, okay? Especially on the roads that we are going to be on. Now, these rocks easily will take out a windscreen. They'll take out the front lights easily, sometimes if the radiator's exposed, potentially, but realistically, Cracked windscreens and broken windscreens are exceptionally common from people accelerating when overtaking that way, okay? 
if you want to pass, and even you pass, you can pass me. There's not, you can't, you know, you're allowed to pass officials and those sort of things as well, all right? Because I'll probably slow down and speed up whatever I need to, what I, you know, where I need to go to. But if you're going to come up to me, you, um, you come up behind OV1 and you'll say your car number, it's car 40, OV1 copy, yep. Looking to pass when safe too, okay? You don't have to use those exact words, but we're looking to pass basically is what you're, you're affecting. Okay, I'm gonna have a look at basically what I've got in front of me visually. Go, yep, it's okay. I'll probably back off, I'll take my foot off the accelerator if it's enough width on the road, pull yourself over. The car behind, car 40 will come up, come up next to me, okay, with enough rolling speed to come past and that'll make sense as you're doing it. Get out in front and then you can start to accelerate more. Okay, but just don't build up around the outside because it's going to be the first thing that'll kill the day very quickly. Okay, same with civilians on the road, or I'll call them civilians, farmers, locals, residents, those things like that. Okay, got to remember these guys are going to work. You know, we're hopefully going out to have a good day and a fun day and visit some kids along the way. Um, these guys are probably doing a, a school run in the morning, they're heading into work and stuff like that there, and they're going to have. 70 plus bash cars, 20 plus, they're going to have 90 cars coming against them in their 20k run to work. So that's not going to be a great morning for them on those things. We've just got to be mindful of getting in and out of towns and stuff like that. Okay, and we had four road trains in about probably six kilometres in one section last time. Okay, so once we knew the first one, the first truck got us on the radio and said he's got another three other following, we actually just got off the road and stopped. Okay, it's easy for me, one vehicle, minimal dust for me, let alone when we go back in his event, there's a fair bit more to, you know, riding on that. So if you get to that point, just safely get over, pull over and stop, just let them come through. If they get off the road and it's a narrow road, they're probably not getting back on real easy. So they will hog the road, they will stay in the middle of it. So just bear in mind, it's not, they're not going to go 50-50, okay, they will take the middle of the road because if they ever come off and they sink, they're not getting going again. So... Um, yeah, so basically, yeah, so just radio through you. If you're stopping um, on the dirt, that's fine, or slowing down, OV1 slowing for dust. Okay, you're going to get times where we might hit some bull dust. For those who know what bull dust is, very fine, powdery dust. You'll know it when you hit it. Okay, so all of a sudden you'll have your normal dust trail coming up, you'll hit bull dust, and it sort of amplifies by about five, uh, five times. So um, what you'll do is just, if your visibility starts to do, just slow down. Okay, but I'm slowing down, OV1 slowing, 142 mark. And then the car, behind the car, behind, they'll know to take their foot off and ease into it and stuff like that. So please be mindful. Um, on the route notes themselves, we'll have a baggage truck. Um, on the route notes, it'll have the instructions. Have a, an AM route note, we'll have where the school address is. If for any reason um, you do end up getting you lost, but you're in town, there's still an address there. On the PM route notes, um, at the bottom of it, we'll have where the baggage truck is. So those who have got gear on the baggage truck, uh, will have the location. I'll also have a mud map on as well of the town. So baggage truck here, dinner here, uh, breakfast the next morning for doing breakfast, whatever it is. So I'll sort of just have that roughly marked up on a mud map, and stuff like those things. So, so yeah, so we'll sort of have all that information um, on the PM route notes. Um, the schools uh, where we've connected in, they may run a fundraising raffle, they may have some merchandise and things like that. So just be mindful. Um, so cash, always have a bit of cash on. I think you guys, if, if you travel by nature anyway, always have a bit of cash. Um, it only takes whatever happened to a crowd strike the other day. Um, but really, you know, uh, servos can go down, uh, hotels can go down bits and pieces. So always have cash. There might be a couple of cash bars only and stuff like that. You know, fishing club running the bar in Burke, where we're going to be, it'll be a cash only. And we'll, um, we'll do comms out via SMS to team captains leading up to these things just to help remind and prompt people as we go along. So, um, so yeah, so just be mindful of those things. Um, so I think realistically, they're the elements of what it is, guys. And for us, I say it, a lot, it makes sense coming into day one when you're actually doing it, living it, breathing it, hearing it, seeing it, those sort of things like that. So just ease into it and, and just absorb it on day one. And then you'll find your pace. You'll find out what you want to do there. If you want to be up in the front of the pack there, if you want to ease back at the tail end and stuff like that, it's okay. So just, yeah, take day one to, to ease into it. Um, ask the questions as you're going along, please do. Um, if something doesn't make sense or it's just something's not right that you think, talk to us, let us know where it sits, okay? Um, I'll do another briefing session in Dubbo for those as a refresher and all those who I haven't seen from Inner Straight um, at one o'clock on the Saturday afternoon um, in a, uh, Victoria Park. Um, and then otherwise, yeah, we'll see you on Sunday morning at the zoo. 
Um, so we're using the zoo as a marshalling point um, for where we sit there. Um, and then, yeah, Canamal Public School. Um, some of the kids, not all the kids will be in on a Sunday, um, as you'd expect, but um, the schools still love to see us. So we're going to connect in with the, um, some of the kids there at Canamble. Um, and then, yeah, head out to Burke for the first night. So, yeah, very much looking forward to it.